In our headlines on this Thursday afternoon, October 12th, here in South Korea. Israel's retaliation against the Palestinian militant group Hamas that controls the Gaza Strip has ordinary Palestinians in that region paying the price as access to basic necessities like fuel is denied. And while the Biden administration has shared its unwavering solidarity with Israel against Hamas, U.S. officials have also shared their intentions to seek a humanitarian passage to safety for ordinary Palestinians in Gaza. Meanwhile, a U.S. nuclear-powered aircraft carrier arrives in the southern port city of Busan on this Thursday in a show of strength against North Korea, following a trilateral maritime drill including South Korea and Japan. No fuel, no food is being allowed into the Gaza Strip as Israel responds ruthlessly to the unprovoked multi-pronged raid by Hamas last Saturday that killed over a thousand Israelis. Our Isinje has this story. Gaza is currently without electricity as its only power plant has now shut down after running out of fuel. The shutdown comes just two days after Israel ordered a complete blockade of Gaza closing off access to electricity, food, fuel and water in response to Hamas's surprise attack on Israel last weekend. According to the head of the Gaza Power Authority, people are using generators for electricity, but even the fuel needed for generators is running out. Hospitals have also been affected and are set to run out of fuel by Thursday. The blockade order also means the water supply has been cut off, resulting in a severe shortage of drinking water for some 610,000 people. According to a New York Times report citing anonymous officials from Lebanon's military, Israel has been using white phosphorus bombs in its offensive against Gaza, a claim that Israel denies. White phosphorus bombs are internationally prohibited under the 1980 Geneva Convention when civilian areas are targeted. Meanwhile, Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi said Wednesday that Cairo is pushing for talks to contain the situation between Israel and Hamas. The Egyptian leader also called for a six-hour ceasefire to deliver aid to besieged regions. Meanwhile, the U.S. Navy's most advanced aircraft carrier and its strike group arrived in the eastern Mediterranean Sea on Tuesday in what Washington says is a move to deter any actor seeking to escalate the situation or widen this war. Following the deployment of the USS Gerald R. Ford Carrier Strike Group, the U.S. is considering sending another aircraft carrier to the region, with U.S. defense officials hinting at the deployment of the USS Dwight D. Eisenhower to Mediterranean waters near Israel. Lee Seung-jae, Arirang News. Indeed, the U.S. is standing in solidarity with Israel amid the latter's confrontation with Hamas. But the Biden administration is also looking to set up a corridor to safety for ordinary Palestinians caught in the conflict in the Gaza Strip. Our Ishihu reports. The White House is having active discussions with Israel and Egypt to find a way for some civilians to leave Gaza through a potential corridor. Now, I know many of you have uh, been asking about or expressing some interest in the idea of safe passage in Gaza for civilians. Let me just say right up front, we're actively discussing this with our Israeli and our Egyptian counterparts. We the U.S. continues to support safe passage, Kirby highlighted during the White House briefing. We support safe passage for civilians. The civilians are not to blame for what Hamas has done. They didn't do anything wrong. I don't have an announcement to make today. I can't tell you a specific route or a corridor. I just want to make it clear that we are actively working on this with uh, our Egyptian and, uh, and our Israeli counterparts. The White House is also pushing for additional funding for Israel along with Ukraine and has been speaking with members of Congress. And it's critical again that we believe Congress sends a, a clear message to Putin, sends a clear message to the Israeli people uh, that, uh, that the United States continues to have their back. Kirby said the U.S. can support both countries for now in the immediate term with existing authorities and appropriations. Meanwhile, NBC reported on Wednesday that the Biden administration is preparing a supplemental funding request to submit to Congress that combines money for Israel, Ukraine, Taiwan and U.S. border security. Lee Si-hoo, Arirang News. 
Now, as mentioned earlier, the latest violence between Israel and Hamas was triggered by a surprise brutal assault by the Palestinian militant group on Saturday during a music festival in the southern Israeli country. My colleague Chesyong spoke to one of the survivors of that very festival. In one breath moment, a music festival meant for joy turned into a nightmare in southern Israel near the Gaza border on Saturday morning. Hila, a 26-year-old part-time bartender at the festival, told Arirang News that a rocket went off overhead. She thought it was fireworks. I was telling to one of the customers, hey, look, there is a fireworks. And he looked at the sky and told me, I don't think it's fireworks. And we see a lot of a red alarm, we call it in Israel, when like it's, it's a missiles and rockets uh, alarms. And then the production shout out the music and scream, uh, there's a lot of missiles and rockets, uh, run, run or hide. At first, she hid inside the bar, frozen still in fear. One of her friends grabbed her hand to get off there. And I turn around and see uh, all the terrorists People start to falling one by one, just like it doesn't mean related to if you are a soldier or an innocent civilian. How old are you? What is your gender? What is your religion? If you Israeli or not? Just shooting, just shooting all the people. Some of her friends were killed in the massacre terror at the festival, and the faith of some is uncertain. They're raping my friends. I have three friends that are already dead. Two of them, we don't know what's happened to them, and two of them inside of Gaza. That the one of the things that I, I do remember, it's really in my mind that while we are running and screaming and crying, I hear them singing and laughing. A freelance journalist based in Tel Aviv, Israel, delivers the current situation from the field in Gaza. The authorities in Israel ended up finding uh, 260 dead bodies just from this uh, this uh, festival alone. Um, I know some of the, in one of the communities where a good friend of mine lives, at least 15 people even within her community um, were murdered, um, dragged out of their homes and shot pretty much execution style uh, in her words. She added almost 360,000 reserve trips, including volunteers have been called up throughout the country. And Israel doesn't want to kill anyone. We don't want to kill Palestinians. That's not what the ethos of, of this country is about. But Israel must defend itself, and we don't have any choice. They said that Palestine and Hamas are completely different, and that the terrorist organization must stop. Che Hong, Arirang News. In other news, a U.S. nuclear-powered aircraft carrier arrived in the southern port city of Busan on this Thursday in a show of strength against Pyongyang. The Seoul's defense ministry says the USS Ronald Reagan, including its battle group, is here for a five-day visit. Now, prior to its arrival in Busan, it partook in a trilateral maritime drill, including South Korea and Japan in international waters southeast of Jeju Island. It is also the second U.S. aircraft carrier to dock in Busan in six months, following the USS Nimitz back in March. The latest events come as part of the Biden administration's commitment to strengthen, quote, visibility of its strategic assets on the peninsula amid North Korea's nuclear ambitions. And North Korea's Kim Jong-un has reportedly exchanged words of warm wishes with his Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin to mark the 75th anniversary of diplomatic relations between Pyongyang and Moscow. According to North Korea's state-run media on this Thursday, Kim claimed he was, quote, very satisfied with his recent trip to Russia for what he described as an open and comprehensive exchange of opinions with his Russian counterpart. The report adds that Putin also well acknowledged his latest summit with Kim, saying the meeting confirmed their friendship and cooperation. Now, back in 1948, Russia was the first country to recognize the North Korean regime.
Korea has pledged multiple donations for global funds during a meeting of G20 finance ministers and global bank leaders over in Morocco. According to Seoul's finance ministry on this Thursday, finance minister Chu Kyung-ho pledged 3 million US dollars in support of the Global Supply Chain Partnership Program. He also promised an additional 80 million US dollars for the Green Growth Trust Fund in support of the World Bank's new vision for a livable planet. At a roundtable to largely discuss support for Ukraine, Minister Chu shared plans to donate 50 million US dollars to the Special Program for Ukraine and Moldova Recovery Fund. On the local front, there was a tangible jump in the number of eco-friendly vehicles registered here in the country last month. According to the Korea Automobile Manufacturers Association, the number of eco-friendly cars surpassed 2 million in September to account for 7.9% of all registered vehicles. The figure has been on a rapid rise in recent times from just 500,000 back in the year 2019. Eco-friendly cars include hybrid cars, electric cars and hydrogen vehicles. And efforts to ease our carbon footprints are also being taken up by a local supermarket franchise that has chosen to adopt a new and more sustainable method of cooling its products. Our Ian Jin explains. This is a supermarket franchise that is generally located in areas on the outskirts of major cities. This particular branch is the first to use the latest technology in refrigerators and freezers in their meat section. Normally, commercial cooling equipment uses freon gas, which can be installed easily at a low cost, but emits large amounts of greenhouse gases detrimental to the Earth's ozone layer. But the latest technology uses a carbon dioxide-based refrigerant that doesn't produce greenhouse gases. Applying a carbon dioxide-based supercritical cycle to state-of-the-art control systems, refrigeration and freezing is now possible in one integrated system. The carbon dioxide-based refrigerant has a global warming potential, or GWP index, that is one four-thousandth of conventional refrigerants, which makes it relatively free from risks of explosion or combustibility. The installation costs of the new technology refrigerators are higher than ones that use freon gas, but its energy costs are only 45 percent, making it much more advantageous. We've introduced the CO2 system because despite higher initial installation costs compared to the commonly used freon gas system, operation efficiency is better and we can save energy costs as well as help prevent global warming. There are doors to the display shelves to reduce energy losses. As saving the earth from further global warming becomes more urgent and more efforts are being made to move towards carbon neutralization, the use of such equipment that uses natural refrigerants that don't emit greenhouse gases is expected to increase. Ian Jin, Arirang News. Now, among the innovations on display at this year's exhibition of Robot World is a serving robot that wheels your way if you raise your hand. Our Moon Hyeon was there. Robots that can fry food, robots that can walk on all fours, robots that can piece things together, these are just some of the robots on display at the country's largest robot convention this year. Starting on Tuesday and running until Saturday, the Ministry of Trade, Industry and Energy is hosting the biggest robot world yet. Here at Robot World 2023, over 240 companies and organizations are showcasing a future where robots and humans can walk side by side. This is a robot that serves, but unlike most serving robots that follow a given path, this one can navigate through narrow spaces. It can also avoid small objects on the floor, but its biggest development is the way it responds to human gestures. Raising a hand will register in its system through a camera sensor, prompting it to wheel over. This South Korean company also developed the first cleaning robot in the world that, instead of wheels, has a mop that swivels to move. This year, it's been upgraded so that it can pass over raised door sills into different rooms. But robots are now advancing beyond assisting humans in their daily lives. Now we're a step closer to coexisting with robots and having them work with each other. The Korea Institute of Science and Technology has developed a sequence of coordinated robots to create the ultimate cafe experience. Robots take your order, make the coffee, serve it to your table and also serenade you with music. This demonstration shows how different robots will be able to coexist with us in the future. 
And it's not just in our everyday routine where robots come in handy. In industrial production, they're key workers. Labor shortages in the shipbuilding industry are a serious issue all around the world. Not only are there not enough people, but as jobs such as welding require special training, it's difficult to find people who have enough experience to produce the quality of work needed. With these robots, however, anyone can weld. This robot just needs a starting point of welding, and then it will do the job for you. With the expansion of robots in a wide variety of fields from service to manufacturing, it's fast becoming a key future industry for the country. The government will be announcing its fourth basic plan for intelligent robots within the year in order to foster the robotics industry further. Moon Haryan, Arirang News. Meanwhile, there is an artist here who has taken to Lego bricks to create a charming rendition of Korea's rich cultural heritage. Our correspondent Song Yoo Jin has details. The soulful sound of the Korean traditional song Pamsori harmonizes with the graceful moves of Chunengmu, a Korean traditional dance. What makes this performance even more captivating is a Lego ensemble seemingly dancing and playing music in the background. It's all part of Lego artist So jin -ho, or Colin Jin's first solo exhibition, Colin Jin's Historical Lego, where plastic blocks breathe life into tradition. Korean culture is enjoying global popularity, but in reality, everything popular today is quite modern. It made me wonder if we might be losing touch with our history. I began delving into our cultural heritage from the past and got the idea of using Lego blocks to connect the past with the present. The exhibition showcases a hundred Lego artworks depicting Korean cultural heritage. The highlight is the Jongmyo Jereak, a royal ancestral ritual that was carried out between the 14th and 19th centuries during the Joseon dynasty. A UNESCO cultural heritage, this Confucian ceremony features song, dance and music with dozens of performers. The, the playful combination of the traditional orchestra, so even the traditional Korean instruments are in there. Uh, several of them. So I think it's quite exciting. You can also enjoy Lego versions of the Korean folk dance Seungmu, a dragon faced roof tile from the ancient Silla Kingdom, and the Korean mask Tai. It took Seo 18 months and over 10,000 blocks to finish his creations, and he didn't rely on any customized Lego blocks or manuals. The exhibition's goal to entertain and educate visitors. Making Korean culture and the arts easily enjoyable for everyone is a wonderful endeavor. We're delighted to be a part of the opening ceremony and look forward to promoting our cultural heritage to a wider audience. A reinterpretation of traditional Korean beauty through the lens of one of the modern era's most iconic toys, Colin Jin's historical Lego is on show at the Moriham exhibition in central Seoul for two weeks. Song Yujin, Arirang News. Let's take a look at what's going on in the world now. Australian Chinese journalist Chang Lei has been freed from Chinese detention after more than three years. According to Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese on Wednesday, Lei has been returned after being freed via a legal process. It comes as tense relations between Canberra and Beijing appear to be improving after reaching a peak during the pandemic. The 48-year-old was arrested in August 2020 and was accused of illegally supplying state secrets overseas. At the time, she was working as a business anchor for CGTN, China's state-run English-language TV station. Chinese authorities allege she admitted to using her position to gather sensitive information for a foreign organization. But much of her case was kept behind closed doors, prompting criticism that the detention may have been politically motivated. NASA has for the very first time revealed an analysis of rock samples that were collected from an asteroid over 330 million kilometers away. According to the space agency on Wednesday, material taken from the Bennu asteroid around three years ago was rich in carbon and water-laden minerals. The find backs up a long-held theory that asteroids such as Bennu 
may have played a vital role in delivering important elements to support life on Earth billions of years ago. The analysis comes after an initial three-day study of just a small amount of the complete rock sample collected from the 4.5 billion year old asteroid. The material was scooped up by a specialized spacecraft in October 2020. It then took a three-year journey back to Earth. In the United States, scores for high school students taking the American College test have dropped to their lowest in more than three decades. This is according to the latest figures released on Wednesday by ACT Inc., the nonprofit that gives the test. It said that the average ACT composite score was 19.5 out of 36, down 0.3 points from last year. Although college admission test scores have been falling for six years, the drop accelerated during the COVID-19 pandemic. The results mean that new high school graduates may not be ready for college-level coursework. The organization says that average scores in reading, science and math were below the required standards needed to ensure a successful first year in college. And finally, Jada Pinkett Smith has revealed that she and her husband, Will Smith, have been separated for seven years. The reveal on Wednesday came in a clip of an upcoming interview on NBC News primetime. Pinkett Smith said that the couple had not said anything to the public as they had not been ready to disclose their separation. She added that they are still figuring out, quote, how to be in a partnership and that they are not legally divorced. The couple, now both in their 50s, have been married since 1997. Their relationship issues were thrust into the spotlight last year at the Oscars when Will Smith slapped presenter Chris Rock of a joke he made about Jada. Matthew Ashley, Arirang News. Good afternoon. A pleasant autumnal feel continues across much of Korea under sunny skies. The temperature range in the capital is similar to Wednesday, hovering around the seasonal norms. Large temperature differences persist between day and night, and mountainous regions in Gangwon-do are having an early taste of winter when the sun is in. Chuncheon in Gangwon-do province has been waking up to single-digit morning temperatures for a few days now, but afternoon highs will be a big jump, rising into the 20s this afternoon. Afternoon highs are similar to yesterday in most places, hovering in the low 20s at about 23 degrees Celsius under mostly sunny skies with decent air quality. So it's another fine day to get outside in the afternoon, even for a short stroll. Despite plenty of sunshine, UV rays will not be strong. As much as we wish the weather pattern to stay this stunning, there will be a cool down from next week as the hiking season approaches. That's Korea for you, and here's a look at the international weather conditions. Right, and that ends this edition of the Daily Report. We have our panel session coming up next, so do stay with us.